down to about 10 minutes from 17, all the cussing and pleasuring themselves and ah, dead kids and ha ha, ran over that dead body. Uh, so we're going to be playing that while Rivero's on with us today and analyzing it piece by piece. But another issue is how the media is spinning this, saying this is a great thing. Or they're still saying this, the dead puppy, throwing the puppy off the cliff is fake when the Pentagon, here's CNN, admits it's real. So there's this denial of what's going on. Mike Rivero, I would imagine you've seen the footage. Give us your take on it. Well, I'm, I'm absolutely shocked by the footage, uh, you know, to actually see it. I'm not surprised these things are happening. Uh, looking at it, it's obvious that our troops are so conditioned to view anybody that is doing anything other than simply walking along as suspicious. Uh, we are now coming to understand that what those pilots thought were AK-47s were actually cameras with telephoto lenses being carried by these reporters for Reuters News. And the pilots just leapt to a conclusion, oh, there's something on a strap, it's a long tube, must be some kind of weapon, and they got permission to fire, and they just blasted everybody in the area. They didn't even target just the soldiers carrying or what they thought were soldiers carrying rifles, they simply blasted everybody in the area. And then the most sickening thing is you've got this guy on the ground, which we later find out is one of the Reuters reporters, and he's just crawling, wounded, bleeding all over the place, trying to get out of the street, up on the sidewalk, and they're talking about, can we shoot him? He's still alive. Can we shoot him? Give us permission to shoot him. The van shows up. People get out to help this wounded guy. There is no sign of aggression there's no sign of any weapons. There's no uniform or anything to indicate that these are hostile forces. The uh, Apache crews get permission to fire, and they just blast this van. Then we find out there are children in it. They were just there trying to help the guy. we got a couple of dead Reuters reporters. It's disgusting. It really is. Well, and, and, and also, when they're picking up his body, they go, that's a weapon. Open fire. They can see it's his body they're picking up. So they're, they're, they're framing him. Soon to be police officers in a city near you, pulling your daughter over. We'll be right back with Mike Rivero. Stay with us. Key information straight ahead. We know that WikiLeaks has scores of videos. WikiLeaks told MSNBC this this morning of gun camera footage, in some cases, of hundreds being killed. They'll go to a wedding. They say there's one guy they want to get. They kill everybody. And more times than not, the person they even wanted to kill wasn't even there. And there is footage all over Afghanistan of reporters being killed. They are targeting reporters because they don't want them there. And now the Pentagon in the last year has been talking about targeting reporters here in the United States and going after websites. The issue here, the foundation of this is PNAC, George Bush's handlers, wanted to go into Iraq. They said we have to have a Pearl Harbor event to do it. They lied about WMDs premeditatedly. They knew they weren't there. That's come out in the Downing Street and White House memos. Over a million dead Iraqis in the last six-plus years. That's a conservative number. Some are as high as a million and a half. Uh, almost none of those are actual military combatants. So it's a scorched-earth policy. Same thing in Afghanistan. And it's so bad now, Mohammed Karzai is panicking the, the Unicol executive, the globalist puppet, saying he may join the Taliban and kick the U.S. out because he knows his days are numbered. And joining us to talk about this is Mike Rivero. Mike, I want to go over all the facets and, and, and the psychological issues here and the neocons everywhere defending this uh, today and still lying and saying the troops aren't killing puppies and things, even when that's admitted. But it's also the psychological abuse of the troops putting them in this type of culture, promoting uh, this type of culture, Mike. And now... The majority of new police recruits, as you know, in the last decade are being recruited out of the military. So these guys are going to be on our streets and are on our streets. Yeah, that's a very terrifying situation here. I mean, we've seen video of American soldiers throwing live grenades into flocks of sheep just to see what's going to happen. And this kind of incredible callous disregard uh, is something that obviously is being indoctrinated into these kids when they get over there. Uh, and we saw the same thing in Vietnam, where ordinary, well-behaved young men and women were drafted into the military. They were sent through boot camp, which turns you into a crazed killer in just you know six weeks of basic training. Then they come back into the society and they have trouble reintegrating and going back to being well-behaved citizens and this video that we saw yesterday uh 
what is really most chilling about it is, to, as you were saying, to just hear the sounds of their voices and how excited they are to be doing this and this complete detachment from the recognition. Those are real human beings down there. I know it looks like a giant Nintendo set when you're studying it through your thermal vision system, but those are real people down there, and they haven't done anything that justifies being blown apart by cannon shells. And yet these pilots and gunners, they're just having the time of their life. That's a very scary psychology at work. And I've listened to the gun camera tapes from Korea, Vietnam, and other wars. They were very professional uh, as they were dropping bombs, as they were killing people. You don't hear these type of celebrations. And then when the ground troops show up, they're not celebrating. They're freaked out when they see these two wounded girls. And they radio back, hey, th th there were kids in that van. we got to get them to the hospital. And the helicopter pilot just giggles and says, you shouldn't bring them to a battle uh, when they've just targeted basically an ambulance, uh, they're there framing the people on the ground, saying they've got weapons. Clearly, when they're helping to get the wounded in the car, they're saying, oh, there's a weapon, and giggling. Uh, they know there's not a weapon. They're all there encouraging each other, saying, come on, let me shoot, let me get them, like it's a video game. And this is all part of the conditioning and the dehumanization uh, that has taken place. Well, the important thing to remember right now is when all the propaganda is said and done, these videotapes are how the United States is going to be judged and seen by history in the coming years. There's no amount of glorification and flag waving that is going to erase uh, the memory of what is really going on in the ground there. And I'm afraid that the United States, as a moral leader in the world, is absolutely finished because of videotapes like this one. Nobody is going to see America as the good guy anymore. We are the 21st century version of the Nazi conquering hordes, and that's exactly how history is going to remember us. Well, this is in Nuremberg. It came out that on the Eastern Front and in Serbia, uh, they would go in and just kill whole villages, and it was the same attitude. And hundreds and hundreds of Nazi officers were hung by the neck until dead for this. But now we're told, no, this is what the good guys do. Yeah, basically that's it. And, you know, the, the, the war crimes trials are run by the victors is really what it comes down to. And we know that the U.S. did some very atrocious things in World War II as well. It's just because they were the winners, nobody got prosecuted. But right now, as we head into what looks to be an attempt to again sell us a war in Iran, I need to remind everybody that my concern about any more war is we're not in a position to win. And that, you know, we don't have the economy, we don't have the manufacturing capacity, and if we push these wars any further and we are defeated, all of our political leaders are going to be standing on those gallows as they should for the crimes that we see in these videotapes. I want to play a video that I played the audio of last hour. And, and when I say I've seen countless videos, I mean, just live last hour, I remembered some of these and told them, search... Uh, Troops beat Iraqi children. And, and one of these kids looks like he's about six years old. He's in a pool of blood. They drag him off the street for supposedly throwing rocks. They bring him in. The British troops are beating him. There's pools of blood. They're stomping their groin. They're beating him in the head with batons. And there are U.S. troops like Satan and Beelzebub sitting up on top of parapet at a, at a base, looking down 50 yards away, making the most demonic sounds of sadistic enjoyment that I've ever heard, and I and I noticed this same giggling and chortling on tape after tape after tape when our troops and contractors are sitting off the road just randomly shooting up a, a highway, people falling out dead. We have all these videos up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. The same demonic sounds when they throw a hand grenade in between sheep and a, and a sheep herder, uh, literally just killing people. Uh, and enjoying it, I want to play this video and audio so people can hear the sound of, for lack of a better term, what a demon-possessed ring wraith sounds like in a blood orgy. Here it is. They're dragging the kids in. Oh, the yes. Base. Oh, yes. You're going to get it. Yes. Naughty little boys. Yes. 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 Oh, please don't hurt me. Right? <laughs> you little f***. Shoot your ass. You little f***. 